In this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be looking at what an ecosystem is and then later on what a mesocosm is. Make sure you watch a previous video where I talk through various definitions such as community, population, species, abiotic and biotic factors so you understand where our understanding of ecosystem comes from. To begin with, we'll remind ourselves what a community is. And this is a group of populations of different species living together in an area. These populations obviously interact with their abiotic environment, which remember is all things to do with soil pH, temperature, carbon dioxide levels, oxygen levels. And so effectively an ecosystem is formed by the interactions with this abiotic environment and the community. Now these interactions are really important because there's often the transfer of elements between populations in the community and the abiotic environment and this is really an essential part of nutrient recycling and I'm going to talk a little bit more about what that actually means now. Now remember elements are a chemistry term, they feature in the periodic table. If we take the carbon cycle for example, our community would therefore be the plants. Remember they absorb carbon dioxide by photosynthesis. That carbon dioxide is used to build sugars such as glucose. Plants respire, meaning that that carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. Remember some of those plants are eaten and so the carbon is transferred to animal bodies. The nitrogen cycle is another good thing to mention here because remember nitrates contain the element nitrogen. They get absorbed again by the plant roots this time and they get used to build proteins. That protein gets eaten by animals so that nitrogen is transferred and eventually everything dies so decomposers are responsible for converting ammonia now into nitrites and then finally back into nitrates. So hopefully you can see these are nice specific examples of how the cycling of elements occurs. One thing I do want you to be aware of is that ecosystems have the potential to be sustainable over very long periods of time. As long as those nutrients are appropriately recycled, there's plenty of sunlight obviously because that's needed by plants, then they can continue indefinitely. Just to make a list now of the main components required for the sustainability of an ecosystem, Number one, nutrients to be made available. That tends to be the role of the saprotrophs. Remember, these are our fungi, which feed on dead matter by secreting enzymes extracellularly. And by breaking down that dead matter, they make those nutrients available to other organisms. You need a source of energy because plants use that in photosynthesis to make organic compounds. And then lastly, you need to recycle waste. I've already alluded to this when we talked about animals dying in the nitrogen cycle. Those decomposers are known as nitrifying bacteria, and they take those nitrites and convert them into nitrates, which again can be reabsorbed by plants and the process starts again. So now it's time to tell you what a mesocosm is. Well, it's a small experimental area set up as an ecological research program. So effectively, you have a mini ecosystem within a controlled environment, such as this flask that you see here. So let me just label this flask so you can see what's going on. We have a bung at the top, which prevents entry and exit of substances. So notice that these are sealed ecosystems. We have a four litre jar. At the top we have air which obviously contains carbon dioxide and oxygen. Because we've got an aquatic environment with water plants, we have some mud at the bottom for them to anchor into. Here's our pondweed which tends to be Elodea, which is a species of pondweed. And then although it looks like it's just water, remember that water will be full of many different things and many organisms. As I've already mentioned, it contains that pondweed, which remember is an autotroph. There'll also be consumers in there, so things which eat the pondweed, potentially water snails. Saprotrophs, which break down dead matter by secreting enzymes extracellularly. And then finally, detrivores, which do internal digestion on top of dead matter, such as the dead leaves or the dead snails.